What's up, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Well Man's Podcast. My name is Brian Brosey. I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Keone Tita. And today, we're joined by John Patrick Nelson. He's a student physical therapist, an author, and more. He joins us today to discuss emotional intelligence. JP, thank you for joining us today. How are you? Hey, man. I'm doing good, bud. How about yourself? We're doing great. We're excited to have you on, so really appreciate you coming on, and we're excited to talk about this topic, emotional intelligence. So when you approached me to talk about this, first, initially, I was kind of curious as to what sparked your interest in emotional intelligence. Well, you know, just growing up, uh, you know, I've noticed that that's not a topic that has been addressed in the community uh, as much, and now we know that mental health you know, is a is something that's coming to the forefront, and not only in the black community, but in all communities. Uh, I think this is an important aspect for us to target because it's very, uh, it's very very influential, not just in relationships, but also in the workplace. And before you can be successful, you need to be able to kind of know how to articulate how you're feeling, not not only how you're feeling, but how others are feeling in the community or in the workplace or within the relationship and you i feel like with a, a lot of men you know not just uh growing up i feel like we had issues kind of expressing how we're feeling about a certain situation and uh i think that's why i wanted to go deeper into emotional intelligence and trying to develop that in myself because it's it's kind of a very important component to being successful and uh, I just went back to how I was growing up as an individual and how I kind of kept a lot of things in me or how I wasn't able to kind of express how I felt and uh, that was what initially drew me to that not only that but also how uh, mental health issues have been causing such uh, being so it's it's causing such calamity within our our nation, uh, within the community, and how a lot of people are turning to you know uh, pills and, and cause it, which is causing suicide rates are going up, and other you know abuses and so forth. So I felt like you know it was up to me. We have to start within ourselves to really kind of bring this issue to the forefront. Yeah, absolutely. Lead from the front. I love that, man. Yeah. So So, go ahead, Kenny. Go ahead, sir. So so I I guess you kind of implied there, um, JP, that the emotional intelligence is is not as well developed in in men as it may be in women. Is that correct? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I feel like I I get it. I see that too. (laughs) The reason I say that I've done a lot of reading a lot of research on this topic, watched a lot of TED Talks. I I think the main reason because of that is growing up as men, we're kind of told, you know, to be tough. It's the expectation that's placed on us. You know, if a boy is crying, you know, the the father or the mother might be like, toughen up, you know, don't come back to me until you kind of toughen up. So it doesn't give them that opportunity to express how they're feeling. Right. Right. So if you're not able to kind of, express how you feel and to bring your emotions to the forefront, there's no way you could manage it. Right. However, on the female standpoint, you know, females are more, you know, encouraged to open up. And, you know, if a young lady comes and cries to his, her mother or her dad, she's, you know, kind of embraced right. and not told to go to your room and, you know, go shut the door and come back to me when you're man up. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I feel like that's, that is where it started initially. Right. Uh, by the expectations, you know, of our society. Right. Yeah. And that leads into like you're implying there that later on in life, how do you how how are you going to connect with other people or your peers if you if you're kind of bottled up all the time and can't express yourself? Yeah. And what happens is, you know, you distance yourself from these emotions. Right. That you're feeling, you know, as men. And, you know, some women as well. And that kind of distanced that relationship with others as well. Because communication and emotions what link people together. Right. Uh, So with with your distance in that emotional standpoint and with your emotional intelligence, the lower your EQ is, your EI is, on my part, 
pardon me. The lower it is, the less you're able to communicate with others, build uh, sustain, and sustain meaningful relationships. Right. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. And I think that's where we, you also alluded to kind of the political climate today. And that's where we just get in the, we can't understand each other because we can't express ourselves to begin with. Just. And, you know, I, I know we're physical therapists and we understand, you know, how important it is to be able to communicate with our patients. Yeah. Uh, I feel like even in the profession or whatever profession it may be, uh, I feel like you have to have that emotional uh, intelligence or the EQ. Nowadays, within, you know, uh, jobs, they're looking for individuals who have a high emotional intelligence because they understand that that is going to lead them to success. And to build that emotional intelligence is uh, a lot more, it takes a lot more work than the IQ. You know, yeah. you can always teach someone to improve uh, their IQ by, you know, studying and teaching them how to do certain things. But that emotional intelligence takes that person. It has to take that inner. You have to be willing to kind of put that work in for yourself. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So for both of you, what we keep throwing out emotional intelligence or that EQ, what is that? What's the definition of that? And we'll start with, I guess, you, Keone. What do you think the definition of emotional intelligence? intelligence is um i i would say that emotional intelligence is is kind of what jp's implying here is is being able to um i don't know be able to be more empathetic like being able to to be able to read people being able to um mm -hmm. see where they're coming from their point of view um i it's much more than just, you know, being able to, uh, you know, as a man to, to be able to cry, at, you know, in, in front of somebody. It's like, how, how do you relate to other people in a way that does not um, isolate them or, or make them feel, I don't know, less than, so to speak, or they're, mm -hmm. or they're, or they're completely wrong. Like that, being able to validate people while, while, not sacrificing your own integrity or what you stand for. That's, that's where I would kind of go with it. Yeah. I would even take the empathy and just branch it off to, to yourself, starting mm -hmm. with yourself and then empathy yeah. towards everyone else. Right. Right. JP, you agree? Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Like what Keone said, emotional intelligence first, it starts within yourself. Uh, how you're able to identify your feelings or how you're feeling or how you're able to identify how a certain situation affects you. And, you know, once you're able to kind of master that within yourself, then you're able to kind of identify these different, uh, you're able to identify this within others. So how they come off and how they're feeling. And it's, 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 it kind of links together between cognition and your feelings. So emotional intelligence, it has three components to it. It has the behavior, you know, it has the, uh, your thinking, your thoughts, and your physical, how you're feeling. So those three components linked together, you know, kind of group. And it, it, that is the major thing that when you bring those three together, that is the emotional intelligence. So if you're unable to kind of uh, identify or understand your body, your, your thinking process, and how your physical uh, well-being is, then you won't be able to kind of uh, achieve the optimal, you know, emotional kind of uh, intelligence that you're trying to, you know, to attain. Yeah. So having all three of those in a balance to really be yes, able to, definitely, yeah. without a doubt. And um, just like Keone says, you know, you have to work on that. Just like you work on your IQ and you're able to read, you have to work on, you know, going out and speaking to others and going out and understanding how you're feeling in a certain situation. I feel like, uh, including myself, I you have to sit down and journal and understand, okay, that situation right there made me feel a certain type of way. So I won't, you know, won't go back into doing that thing that made me feel that way. So it's managing your emotions. It's managing how you, you speak to yourself and how you uplift yourself, how you motivate yourself, the empathy aspect, your reasoning, um, how resilient you are stress management, all of those components and communication, you know, improves your emotional intelligence. 
Yeah. And all that guy was circling around things you do yourself. So it's, it's like that, the, uh, the plane analogy, if the plane's going down, you got to put your oxygen, oxygen mask on before you help someone else. And I think that's, it's a huge part of it. There's constantly working on yourself and focusing on your own emotional situation first will allow you to be more intelligent in other emotional situations. So looking into yourself, looking, looking at yourself, right. Before you, before you react, like what, what about that particular situation caused that caused that emotion and it allows you to pause i guess before you react in a way that you may i don't know regret or or don't mean to i mean i think about this with uh my my wife and i you know she may say something something to me that uh i may perceive as i don't know being on my case or, or just, you know, like mm-hmm. that badgering me about something, whatever, whatever it may be. Whereas she, all she's doing is just saying, you know, put the, I don't know, that, that, that glass away instead of <laughs> taking it. You do know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, but you know, it's like, it's, so it's like taking, taking a stand back and like understanding where your emotions come from and, and, um, so you don't react in a way that you may regret, you know, later. And I think it especially applies for healthcare providers, right? Um, yeah. you, you really have to have to be in a way you have to meet the person where they are um, and, and really uh, be empathetic. Try to try to see try to see it from their point of view, I think, to be a good, good healthcare provider. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as so as men, I, I'm interested, Keone, is how you developed kind of the ability to take a step back and just focus more on your own emotional intelligence and be aware of what you are feeling. And was it always like that for you? So you seem fairly emotional, intelligent now. Oh, well, well thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask my wife that uh, later. But um, yeah, so, so, saying that. so anyway, <laughs> yeah. It, um, for me, it, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's mature, right? It's like being able to self-reflect. Um, mm-hmm. It's being able to uh, admit that there's, that, that uh, you, you could be wrong, you're wrong or can be wrong. It's, it's the ability, mm-hmm. I, I think, to be open to learning other points of view without having this worldview that, you know, my opinion is is right all the time so everybody has a different point of view and i think if people just step back and and looked at that i mean shoot we wouldn't be you know it'd be a lot better place that we live in if if people self-reflected instead of you know having this knee-jerk reaction that you know you're right and i'm wrong Mm -hmm. you know you have to be open to to yeah i'm you know i can do better you know and I, i think if we're all right. honest with ourselves. We all we all can, you know, react in a way that um, is better, you know, to improve ourselves. Right. Self reflection, meditation yeah, is the thing I use. Meditation is one of the things I use. I think it helps. Mm-hmm. I, I think it helps people be more empathetic. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And how about you, JP? You mentioned journaling. Is there like another exercise right. or other things that you incorporate? Yeah, there's an array of different things. You know, I, I'm a big believer. Uh, so religion is very important to me. Uh, running and walking and working out, those are big as well. And just to go back to talk about, you know, first we have to be able to kind of take responsibility for, you know, what is going on. So a lot of, I don't feel like we take responsibility for how we feel. Most of the time we link it to something, you know, he made me feel upset or she made me, you know, feel a certain way or uh, that situation Mm. until we're able to kind of take that and own it, take full ownership of how we feel. There's no way we'll be able to manage it because it's not ours. We, We give it to someone else. And, you know, so with that being said, I've been trying to, you know, in certain situations that I come up on, I kind of take it take the full ownership and say, you know, I'm the one who made me feel that way. You know, even though they did something that was, you know, uh, I was disappointed by what they did. It was Mm -hmm. me that put that on myself to be upset. And once you're able to do that, then you're better able to kind of manage it and you're able to kind of uh, live a more fulfilling life. Right. Um, Man, that's great. Yeah. And ownership over it. 
true. Um, right. Over yeah. Yourself. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's what you think of the situation, right? Is mm-hmm. what happens. Um, you know, as an example of this, I, I've given this example before. And th- so think about this. this. Think about how bad this would have gotten me in trouble, right? I don't know mm-hmm. if I told you this before, Brian, but you remember we were talking on, I think it was one podcast, I was talking about how I was rushing my, my wife out the door. We were late for work and I'm, you know, so I'm kind of, you know, upset, annoyed for one thing. And I throw my computer on top of my car, my bag, we get in the car. She gets in the car. I'm like, hurry up. I'm late for my patients. We start going and there's some guy who's just going as slow as he can in this car and breaking in front of me. And I'm like, what, you know, what mm-hmm. is he doing? So I'm getting upset. I, the, the thought is <laughs> this dude is an asshole. I'm going to, you know, he's slowing me down. He stops the car. I look at my wife. I'm like, I'm going to have to get in a fight with this dude. I'm just going to have to. Tell him <laughs> and, and he cuts out of the car and he's like, dude, you're, your computer's on top of your car. I'm just stopping there. You know, I wanted to stop so you can get your computer. And here I am all, you know, riled up and everything. I look at my wife and she's just shaking her head. Like, (laughs) (laughs) right. But, but but think of, think about where that thought went. It automatically went to the negative, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It's like, instead of, you know, this person's helping me out is most likely helping me out. Or the person who cuts me off in traffic. How about, they're not purposely cutting me off in traffic. They they're rushing to the hospital to say, see a loved one or save somebody or, you know, that's where we should go. We should go with, mm-hmm. the, with the positive. All right. So somebody said something that I perceive as rude. Well, to you that perceive it as rude, it may not be mm-hmm. that way, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I get, uh, just I, to, I get what, ahead, what you're thinking, JP. I mean, I, it's, it's how you perceive the situation, which is, usually the thing that's at fault because you're never going to perceive it the way somebody else does and yeah just like what you said Keone I feel like communicating just really going to that person and having a conversation to, you know because most of the time we just jump we're very impulsive though. right and that's where the limbic limbic system comes in it's a very it's very it's gonna it's a fight or flight system so it's gonna go down to the it's gonna react really fast and right. that's where our emotion comes from it reacts really fast yeah uh, and just and just where what you were saying, you know, focusing on a positive. When you focus on positives, it oh, it expands our world. It opens up the world. We see all our opportunities. When we focus on our negative, it becomes a tunnel. So we're fixated on that issue of what might be going on, and it bothers us, and it, it makes us even more upset because we're narrowed in to the situation, and we make it much more bigger than what it actually is. Yeah. So you know, I, I feel like yes, without a doubt. You know, Damn. That is, uh, I, I think I'm in a tunnel. Okay. <laughs> I think right. I'm in a tunnel. Yeah. Thanks, JP. <laughs> oh, man. Yes. So I feel like having a positive outlook on life, being positive about certain situations, it's okay to have a bad day, but keep a positive attitude. Yeah. You know, yeah. don't let that bad day kind of bring you down and change who you are within yourselves or shift your old aura. Right. So but that, being that, able to kind of go ahead. That, but that bad day is how you, you are perceiving it, your thoughts about that day. You can turn that day around and be like, all right, so this isn't going my way. Instead of being in fear mode or anger mode, look at it as a challenge. You know, that, that there's an old, what's that? that it's, like, it's kind of an old stoic saying, but it's like, you know, turn your, turn your obstacles into, into your, your path of getting ahead. So you learn from your obstacles. Don't, you know. If you perceive something as bad, that's your perception of it. You know, mm-hmm. you can change that perception of that. Patience oh. and that maturity that you were talking about. You know, we have to stop and think because yeah. the, the logical portion of our brain, which is the cortex, you know, it takes time. It's not going to, you know, trigger. You have to stop, think about the situation, think what it may be that's causing it. And you know what? I'm not going to let that overcome me. Right. Uh, I'm not going to let that change my day. I'm not going to make that situation change my ho- whole outlook on that person. Right. And so that's what it comes to, just taking a step back and really evaluating the situation. And that step back, taking that pause is so important, right? If you, it mm-hmm. can take a few seconds to step back and be like, I'm not going to react. Let me, let me get a handle on this situation. It's almost like, 
you know, pause before you react and, and, and then you're probably not going to react in such a way that is going to be uh, very problematic, you know? So that pause, yes. is, that pause is huge. And I, I think for, at least for me is self-reflection and meditation allows you to, to develop that pause in a sense. Mm -hmm. so you don't snap back or, or do something or say something that, you know, you regret, you know, and then mm -hmm. a lot of times can, can ultimately, we see this on the news all the time, ultimately change the trajectory of your life based on just being not, not pausing and self-reflecting and, and allowing you to kind of assess the situation. It's important. Yeah. I think that's a big part of emotional intelligence is being able to do that. Right. And it's okay to be upset about a certain situation. We're going to let you come in, Brian. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's okay to be upset about, you know, what you're going through, but the way you articulate it or the way you get it across. And um, what I was saying earlier, you know, those three components. So your behavior, you know, how you behave and according to how you're feeling, your thoughts. How are you thinking? You know, are you thinking sad thoughts? Are you thinking happy thoughts? Those are both going to affect your body. So, you know, if you're, if you're nervous about a certain situation, your stomach is going to get queasy. And then someone could see how you're acting. You, get, you start dropping books and you start hitting tables because you're fearful of going in front of the class. Uh, so what it comes to now is just like a cardiovascular system. If those three are not aligned, you know, you're not being true to yourself. So if you're in a situation, you're 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 you're, you're kind of uh, sending like a I like to call it cognitive dissonance. So you're telling your your body is feeling a certain way, but you're telling your thoughts something else. So yeah. you're malaligned, and there's like an obstruction. And we know in the cardiovascular system that there's an obstruction. What happens? Cardiovascular failure, yeah. or you know, there's there's no flow. And and I spoke with uh, Dr. Bourgeois, the great Dr. Bourgeois. You know, he's a uh, professor at our mm -hmm. university he just attained his PhD and he was talking about the impl importance of flow yeah and we could see how important flow is not only for the cardiovascular system but for an entertainer you know, a rapper he has to flow for you know to, to kind of make sense and you know for the audience to really be like wow that was good lyrics because yeah. it sounds good to the ear right. uh, same thing you know for you know for our emotions it must flow our behavior should align with what we're thinking and our body and once that's off it, it becomes an issue right you become more honest with yourself right and you know once you become more honest with yourself then you got to start with yourself it, it kind of goes out to you know to the world but when you're right. dishonest with yourself you're constantly finding an uphill battle right and that's when those mental issues come in because you're confused you're wondering you know why I feel a certain type of way or why I feel this way or why that person is, is making me feel, or even traumatic situations from back in your past, you, yeah. you know, you haven't overcome that and it, it takes being honest and, you know, we can reduce these mental issues if we're able to kind of have these conversations with other people. Right. Uh, I feel like that's one of the major thing, you know, no one's ever sat down and really kind of brought this to the forefront until recently in the media. And, yeah. you know, doing that kind of, you know, we're able to manage it just like the emotion. We're bringing it to the forefront because if we don't bring it to the forefront, how we're able to kind of, you know, maneuver it or, or, or kind of, uh, you know, like I said, uh, address the situation and make it better. So mm -hmm. instead of depressing it, just like emotion, if you suppress your emotions, if you bring it down, you know, you're hiding it momentarily. It's like putting a Band-Aid over, over something. You're not fixing it, you know? Right. So just bringing it to the forefront would be, you know, better for everyone and for, you know, for our world. Right. I mean, it's really, you got you to gotta improve yourself. And I, I think uh, people who constantly blame their life situation on, on other things, even though their starting point may be different, but if they're constantly blaming other people for their situation, they're, mm -hmm. they're not growing. They're not, you know, they're not able not to grow. All. And that's one thing people can't take away from you is how you perceive your situation. You know, you may be in an awful, in an awful like situation, but how you perceive it is going to allow you to address it and get over it. Mm -hmm. Well, so what are some of the yeah. ways, obviously leading from the front, but in clinical practice, being that we're all healthcare providers, 
how are we bringing this into each of your practices? Uh, I feel first and foremost, you know, we treat the patient and not their injury, right? Mm -hmm. So with that being said, even now, because I'm off an internship, I'm actually in Georgia, I make sure that I have a, a, I communicate with the patient and telling them that I care. Because if they see that you don't care about them, then they won't be open, they won't open up to you. And if you don't have an individual that's open up and willing to share everything about that, you're not really treating the patient. So it starts with having those dialogue, you know, asking about their family, asking, and even sharing, sharing how you feel as well. You know, you know, sir, you know, having that empathy, that's right. very big. That mm -hmm. is so important. So just bringing that and just bringing that into the clinical practice, you will have a, a, a greater outcome, you know, for even, you know, having your patient, even if you want to start your own business, emotional intelligence and that communication with your patient is number one before you even fix them or even focus about their uh, dysfunction. And, you know, and they could see it. Yeah, they, they could someone see could it. See, they, could see, they could see right through you. Do you care? Do you really care about your profession? Do you really care about what you do? Are you passionate? And once it, it goes through you, it becomes much easier uh, even to, you know, because we know about the placebo effect. That's a form of placebo as well. So yeah. if we're able to kind of express our emotions and how we feel and about the situation and how caring we are, then the patient feels even much better without even you putting your hands on them. Yeah, so, then you start the healing process right then and there. You, right. Know, you, may, you may get them on the road to being better, whether you did anything or not, if you can connect with them in a way that allows them to, you know, see that you care or get that healing process started yeah the bedside manner i mean that's, that's mm -hmm. probably the the one of the most important things in in healthcare. shoot i mean I, you know the, if you get if you get them to laugh and smile there you go i mean mm -hmm. part of your job is done mm -hmm. you know? and yeah and we know we know the importance of that you know right. uh, build, building that intimacy well, right. it might not be, it, it might not, it, it could be the intimacy within your relationship or with, uh, with your friends. So even right. when the situation that comes up, that's, that's kind of, you know, you, you, you're going to fight, you're going to go through disputes, but once you have that connection, they're much, you're, you're able to understand and kind of uh, communicate, you know, your, 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 your unappreciation or your disappointment. That's a better one for what is going on. Uh, when you don't have that alignment, you know, that could sever your relationship and you could go separate ways and, you know, not even talk to each other. Uh, yeah. So you want to you want to have that foundation first, that intimate foundation, or you want to have that foundation so you guys are aligned. So when it comes to a situation that you guys are not seeing eye to eye, it's, it's a lot better for you guys to communicate going forward. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like honesty and self-reflection are like the two pillars that this is kind of built on, at least what I'm gaining mm -hmm. from this discussion so far. Yeah. yeah. What are... So, so uh, we, I want to ask you a little bit about emotion and biomechanics, JP. We definitely know that our posture is, uh, can be a reflection and also, uh, I guess have an effect on our emotion, but what, uh, yeah, what are some good postures for us to be in to feel happier? Okay, so what the whole thing I was talking about earlier, so you know we need to be upright and it shows through your body language. You remember I was talking about our physical. You know, you can show how you're fe feeling just by looking at a person. If they're slouched down, they're upset, oh, they're not up. smiling too much. <laughs> right. So they're more upright, they're more happy about a situation. Or you can watch your face, their physiognomy. Are they always frowning? Are they, are they always upset? You know? So that is so important. Just putting a smile on your face each day when you're walking around, it makes everyone else m much more joyful or much want to be in your presence. Right. Uh, so for the emotional intelligence, like I was saying, that alignment, aligning those three together. So you're not throwing yourself self off. You're not telling your, you're not thinking one thing and your body is not doing the other. And just like biomechanics. You know, if your if your joints are malaligned, if you're trying to go that way, but your foot is planted this way, what happens? There's an injury that's going to yeah. occur, mm -hmm. or they're gonna it's gonna be some something detrimental within your joint, and that same thing occurs for your emotion. You know, uh, growing up, 
I used to always tell myself, you know, uh, my like growing up, I used to feel a certain type of way, but because I was a, a dude, I wasn't able to express that. Like, so, so you know, they'll look at you like even with kids in elementary school, you know, that is sissy, or they might use terms, you know. Oh man, you're not supposed to do that. Girls don't cry. I mean, boys don't cry. So I feel a certain type of way, but I have to come and I have to express it through my behavior in another mm. way. So yeah. you're not. That's not having an alignment. And when you you never you're never letting it go when you do that. Yeah. You, you're holding on to that, and you hold on to that for so long. Like that trauma, it goes on for years and years. And that's what what that's what's ha- that's what occurred so far within the society there's there's 30 year old 40 year old men that's still holding on to things from they're six seven years old and they're wondering why they can't let it go right. so that is that is the thing right there and just like the injury you've been playing basketball since you were seven years old and it's malaligned and now you're you're 30 and you're wondering why your your joints are feeling this way you're wondering why you like you know why there's pain because you haven't addressed the issue you mm-hmm. haven't went down. You haven't put on, you know, whatever it may be to strengthen those muscles. So that's how those two align. So just having that, you know, that that proper alignment is so important, not only for your body, because we know proper alignment is the key, proper posture, uh, but also for your emotions. Yeah. I mean, depending on how you feel, imagine walking around for, you know, 10 or 15 years with like a clenched fist, a clenched fist. Mm -hmm. And if you're very aggressive or angry or kind of bottling all that up, it can certainly, I feel like that's a good analogy is you'll carry that within your, your tissues or your body, you know, depending on what it is, it's anger or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I love seeing people and I'm definitely guilty of it, but like in a practical situation at school, so what you can you can always feel when the practicals are coming because there's a mood that has shifted over the school. Everyone's walking around looking like little upset turtles. They're ready to just be <laughs> smacked <laughs> down. We all have these bad <laughs> postures versus like an open chest. We're all happy to be there. And I think just even that, you see the difference in an individual who walks in there chest high. It, it's just another day regardless of what happens. And they just right. perform better because there's not that, that block, that, that malalignment that you kind of keep referring to. Uh, within that mm-hmm. individual whereas someone who's fully prepared fully ready to go they know all their stuff but they're walking in there like the hunched over turtle they're afraid mm-hmm. to get squished by the teacher and they don't perform as well just because of you know the nature yeah. of walking in with that situation think yeah. about how much communication is done with with body language too right what right are you, what do you mm-hmm. so you're oh, shaking and the and hunched over and the teacher's standing over you right. going oh this person has no idea what they're doing yeah. Well, mm-hmm. it, that's, that's right. And when you're, when you're stressed or in that fear mode or whatever it may be, you, you, you know, you don't flow, you don't have right. good flow, right? You mm-hmm. can't think, right? You're going to tend to, you know, not do well on, on the exam or, or, or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's hugely important. I think uh, for, for men, it's one of the reasons why men, I would say actually don't, uh, tend not to live as long as women. And the reason why I bring that up is because I, I think uh, for, for men, I, I notice this kind of in, in my patients a lot, but for men, the older we get is their, their partner tends to be their, their spouse or, or whatever, or whoever, whoever they're married to. Once that person is, is gone, I mean, you have a lot of loneliness that, that can set in, especially for men, whereas women are very seem very good and apt at holding on to their friends that they've had in high school and so on and so on. And, and a lot of men don't do that. It's like, it's their partner or it's their, their family. And when, when that's, when that's not there, they don't have connections with other male, male peers. It may, Mm -hmm. you know, that, that are really fruitful. It may just be, you know, coworkers that are just kind of acquaintances and stuff like that. And it, it, I think it plays a big role because it brings a sense of loneliness and, you know, the world is on your shoulders and you have to pro- provide or whatever. And, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of stress. And how does that affect the cardiovascular system? Years of stress, of feeling like you're lonely, you have to do it yourself, so on and so on. Keone, just to uh, piggyback or add to what you just said, I felt like that's something that I've, I've you know, seen as well within our community and and the society, how it's built. I felt like that's 
occurring because we're not having as much, when we meet up with our fellows or the guys, we're not talking about real issues. We're talking right. about basketball or drinking a beer or other mm -hmm. women. You know, right. women, when they meet up and they gather together, they're talking about their, how they're feeling with each other and right. they're able to cope more effectively. So now I took it on myself, me and my friends and my line brothers, my fraternity brothers, we make it uh, a point of duty to meet up uh, once a week. And we have like, we read books and we, we discuss it. We're open. We become more, we're open about our emotions or how we feel about a certain situation. Because once we're able to do that, we're able to build up our emotional intelligence. We're able to kind of be more honest with ourselves about right. what is going on. And that's why that is a major issue. You know, and that's, that's why, you know, going forward, we have to bring this out and tell others, tell your son or tell your your nephew or tell somebody else you care. It's okay to get on the phone and have open conversations about a, a certain situation that you're going through. And that why that's why women are more, you know, emotionally intelligent and they live longer because they're happier. They're released in that, you know, yeah. releasing whatever they're feeling inside. Yeah, they and tend to maintain social connections, right? They tend to maintain right. social connections, which that's a major indicator of uh, more, more, you know, mortality and morbidity. Mm -hmm. it, it just it helps you live longer and have a higher quality of life. You know, when people it have does. connections with, with other people, it's, it's huge to mm -hmm. help, help, you know, just help them live better, better and longer lives, healthier lives. It's interesting because, you know, it's, I see, I, I've run into men. This is who are married to high powered women or very independent women who are kind of the uh, breadwinners in the family. And some men can't handle it <laughs> for whatever <laughs> reason they can't handle that. And, and I think that has a lot to do with emotional intelligence, where something as simple as that ruins the relationship because for whatever reason, they feel like their ego, you know, you know, they, they're not they're not fulfilling the, the male role or whatever they perceive that that they're they're doing. Now, imagine that, like, you know, where your your wife is the is the breadwinner and you you are not and that's gonna and that's the reason for the relationship to be to go down a, a negative route i mean it seems like you'd be celebrating <laughs> or, or, or be right, really happy exactly. about that but uh -huh. it goes back to the the perceived male role mm. in society or the uh you know the stay-at-home dad mm -hmm. you know how that's perceived in society like that's not you know real work you know, raising children, right. you know, especially mm -hmm. for a man, for a man to do. Right. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. These societal roles, how they play into it too, you know, as a society. Mm -hmm. Right. Your culture, how you raise, because someone from a different nation or a different country is going to have a different buildup and different values. Yeah. So that is big on your emotional intelligence as well, because if it's understood in a nation that, you know, men, are supposed to be the leader, we see the expectation and we see how that's how these other expectations of men in society, how detrimental to building yourself up emotionally. Right. Uh, so when you're able to kind of understand that and you know you're we're gonna rewrite the narrative, change the narrative. Uh, because what what we've been taught growing is not always right. We have noticed that. Everything that you've learned growing up until this day, you were like, no, it, it wasn't right. And there's things that we've we've done ourselves that's not right. It's a constant, you know, trying to improve ourselves on a on generation to generation. But I felt like this is something that needs improvement. So, you know, for us coming together and actually, you know, having this conversation, that's we're going down that path. And, you know, you know, there's three of us, and we know that three of us could, you know, we understand connection and how connection knows. You know someone that knows someone that knows someone. So if we're kind of, kind of having this, you know, having this conversation, you could pass it on to your wife, and, you know, your wife could pass it on to her friends. You'd be like, you know what, Keone, me and Keone had this conversation, and, you know, it see, I could see the growth within them. And even you, Brian, with your girl and with your, with your buddies, and guys are, you know, once you've seen another guy, you know, is open about expressing themselves. He's like, you know what? 
Maybe I can express myself too. Maybe I could be more real about a situation. Uh, maybe I could take a step back and listen to someone instead of kind of rushing, being impulsive in that. And it just takes that constant wanting to do that. And, you know, you have to be very dedicated to it. You have just got to be consistent. And once you're consistent, it becomes a lifestyle. Right. And, yeah. and that, that's what we're going for. You know, we're, we wanted to become a lifestyle. A second, we don't even need to think about it anymore. It just happens, you know. And, and, and that's, that's what we're working on here, one step at a time. Yeah. You know, it, it brings up an example for me cause I, as far as society goes. And there's many. One, one, of, one of my heroes is, is Muhammad Ali. And I'll tell you the reason why. Because, the re, because during, during the 60s, you know, I, I forget what it was. I don't know the exact situation. But he, got, he got, was going to get drafted to go into the, into, to the Vietnam War. He's one of the few people who actually stood up for his values, basically saying, those people didn't do anything to me. I'm not going to take a gun and shoot anybody. It's not my thing. I'm not going to do it. With, and, and he's a major figure. With the, with the rest of the society at that time just lambasting him, calling him every name under the sun, coward this, coward that. And now look at him because he stood up for his principles, took a step back, mm-hmm. really thought about the situation. And, you know, now he's considered a hero. And he is a hero because he stood up for what he believed in in the face of everybody else saying different. You know, and that, right. that's, like, that's like thinking through, uh, uh, you know, a situation and, and doing, sticking with your integrity. And that's mm-hmm. the thing, sticking, sticking with your integrity, having the emotional intelligence to do that, you know, and to, and to look through all the propaganda that's been spoon fed to us. So, and there's many examples of that, but, mm-hmm. you know, it, it says yeah. a lot about the, about the man, right? That you can stand up in the face of billions of millions of people calling you unpatriotic or whatever they call you. And you don't care. You know what you're doing mm-hmm. is right. You know, doesn't bother you. I, you go through it. Yeah. I feel like that's very important. And, and you know, you, you ever felt, you know, in the past, you felt a certain way about a situation However, mm-hmm. you won't verbalize it because others may feel the opposite of that. Right. And that's what it comes to. You know, you can't please everyone. We know that we can't make everyone happy. But at night when you go home, you're going home to yourself. Yes. So you have to align within yourself. You know, I feel this certain way about this. You know, how they feel is not my duty. Right. I'm not responsible for how they feel. Yeah, they you're responsible, responsible for your own. You're responsible for exactly. how you feel and how you take it, how the situation and it all goes back to owning, owning yeah. that for yourself. You have to own it. So they must own that. You know, whatever they did for to me, you know, that's their reaction. We're not in control of that. We can only, you know, control what we're able to. And that's our own you right. know, emotion and how we come off. So, yeah, I agree with you on that. Yeah. That was beautiful. So, JP, is there anything that we kind of brushed over that uh, no. you need to mention? Or do you think we covered it? It was great. I think yeah, I think functions of emotions, we can use our emotions to do other things and, you know, to be creative. So we know a lot of musicians, you know, when they're going through a sad time or they're, you know, they're going through a difficult time, they make the most beautiful music. They make the best music. You could feel it within. You feel that connection. You could feel the realness. And those most of the time are the, the Grammy winners. So yeah. being yeah. able to channel how you feel within a, a platform or something creative maybe it might be drawing or whatever you like or you enjoy doing being able instead of you know taking a step back and and that helps you to kind of get it off of you journaling writing and that's big for me writing has always been a big thing for me kind of express myself through my writing and you know and others enjoy it so hey i get to express myself and i I get to influence other in a positive way uh, also, the social value of, you know, your emotions, being able to connect with others, which we, we went over. And also the physical safety. Uh, if, you step, if you step in somewhere, you feel that gut feeling, that intuition that also, you know, is a part of the limbic system. The limbic system is that inner gut feeling that we feel. We go into the alley and we feel, oh, it's not safe. We need to get up out of there. We need to follow that gut feeling that we're feeling, that's inside yeah. of us. And yeah. it's, it's little signals like that. You could speak to someone and you don't feel that energy, you know, follow it and just go the opposite way. You know, we need to be more aware of our how our body, the, you know, it's telling us what is, what is it telling us and stop trying to neglect it. 
And yeah. once we're, yeah, once we, we do things like that, we're, we're aligning ourselves and right. aligning our body. It's flowing. Like I said before, we've been going over it time and time again, just flowing, going in the right direction. JP, and, how do you, how do you, so if, what do you do in your life right now? Like you said, you meet with a, a group of guys periodically, I guess, or, or friends mm-hmm. that you, you, you keep maintain those relationships. It sounds like that's a big part of, of developing emotional intelligence, I, I guess for, for men. I mean, and, and I think it's a little bit difficult for men to maintain those male, those male relationships, but is that something that you actively work on and how do you do it? Yes. Um, um, nowadays I'm more intentional about the things I do. So I wake up in the morning and I have like, you know, a normal thing. I wake up, I, I pray, I do, I've done a lot of reading, you know, uh-huh. just trying to build my mind. Because we, we, not only the emotional part, we got to address the physical part. We have to address the, uh, the spiritual part. So we have to have a balance between everything in our life. So I understood, I started understanding the importance of building those connections with others. Instead of, you know, waking up and just waiting for someone to reach out to me, I've been reaching out to others more. And, mm. and, and, and knowing the situation that I have to uh, step up to the forefront. I have to be the bigger person. So, for instance, if I'm in, in in a situation where I know I can read someone's physiognomy or read their body language, I know they're not feeling well about a certain, certain situation, I take it on myself to go up and address them. Like, yeah. how are you doing today? Is everything okay? Are you feeling all right? So, being able to step up more and being able to kind of, everything that I've read and done, being able to bring it and actually practice it. So this one thing to actually say, it, but are you going out there to do it? Yeah. So that is what I've been trying to do on a daily basis. Just practice everything that I am preaching. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting because it sounds like you're just more you're more open and available to to people whether they're friends or not, right? Like if you're yeah. somewhere, you're sure. well, you can see it on campus too. With, oh, with really? The- so, <laughs> so you're just more open. To- you're more open to saying hi and starting a conversation yeah, instead, of, of instead, of, instead of bottling stuff up and moving on. Cause most of us, right. I mean, I'm, I'm guilty of this. You walk down the street, you know, you don't acknowledge anybody. You don't even smile. It's like you basically head down. <laughs> I got stuff I got to go do, you know? Yeah. Um, right. Whereas I think if you just smile, smiling at somebody or making eye contact in a, you know, in a non-threatening way or in a friendly way, I mean, that, that in itself can improve somebody's day. So it's, yeah, I guess, I think for men, practicing being more social outside of your close-knit friends is a huge thing to work on. You know? Yeah, and if, even, yeah, even when I walk down the, maybe the hallway and I see someone with a nice tie, you know, before I probably see in my head, I'd be like, okay, that's a nice tie, and I don't say anything. I'm more, I'm a verbalizer now. I'm a hey, hey, young man or sir, that is a nice tie that you got on. Where did you get that tie from? And, yeah. you know, that that is what we want. You know, it's okay. Hey, young man, you looking strapping today, man. You looking good. You got a nice haircut. So <laughs> it just goes much further because women, women do. Are you serious? Especially other men, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, I don't know what that's about. That's kind of crazy if you think about it. It's like, is it mm-hmm. like, well, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want to give many kudos for anything, you know? But yeah, that's weird. I think people right. should be more, I don't know, yeah, more complimentary um, than we, we tend to be about things. And yeah, I feel like we as males are definitely not. Yeah, we're not in a way. It's like it's like kind of um It's competition y in a yeah, way. Yeah, it's like a competition. Exactly. Thing. It is a competition. And it's okay to still have that, you know, the competitive nature, but there's a balance. You yeah. could be, you know, competitive, but you know, if somebody did something good that 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 you feel like deserves that that recognition, why not go out and lift that person up? It's not hurting you, it's not taking nothing off of you. Right. And it just, you know, and, and that's what we need to do more often on a daily basis. And I've been way more intentional. Every time, anytime I feel like I need to say something, I try to go forth and say it, even, especially when it's a positive thing, yeah. you know, I, I try to go on and, and put it out into the world because it comes full circle, whether you know it or not. And I feel just, I'm, I'm not as, you know, 
in the past six months, when I've delved into this emotional intelligence and reading different books, and there's a book that I, I would definitely tell you guys to pick up um, that I suggest. Uh, there's two books, to, to be honest with you. If you guys have any time, I'll tell you to go out and grab it. Yeah. I felt I felt just more at peace, man. Just more joyful and just happy about everything. And you Even people around you better, more joyful. Yes. Yes. I just feel much I just feel greater. I'm not gonna say I don't have bad days like I said initially, but I have a great I have a good attitude about those days that are bad. Yeah. And then the good days is just icing on the cake. Yeah. So uh, just going every day, just understanding that, you know, it's OK to ha open up there, you know, and you got I'm not saying well, you have to be aware of who you open up to as well. So right, build right. those connections, build those foundations, because others might take it and run with it and and it could go elsewhere. So what, yeah, what are those what books, I'm, JP? Do you have those books on hand? Yeah, actually, I have. I'm going to tell you one book that I don't have on hand because I gave it to someone else because it was such okay. a great book. What's it's what, the way what? of the superior? Okay, the Way of the Superior Man by David Dieter. Have you guys I haven't heard, read that. That, heard no, about I haven't that? heard of it. You, 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 have, you have to get that book. The Way, the Way of the Superior Man? Yes, by David Dieter. And that How book do you spell that last name? Hold on. How do you spell that last name? D-E-I-D-A. Okay. D-E-I-D-A. Okay. All right. And it's, 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 it's a line in about our, the same thing, like I said, our expectation of men in society and how we must shift it. So it tells about building a relationship with your, your woman and also building a relationship in the workplace and with yourself. It gives a very in-depth, he's very, the David did a great job on it. And, you know, I would like to meet him one day for his thought process and how he was able to kind of, you know, implement everything in such a manner. Uh, that was a great book. The other book is this book that I'm, this is actually my, my third time reading this book. And this is a book that me and my boys are currently reading. Uh, Emotional it's, intelligence. It's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. And it's yeah. by Gil Hasson. H-A-S-S-O-N. Great book. Okay. And definitely for all the viewers, you want to go check it out. Barnes & Noble. I think I got it for $5.99. Uh, I don't know how much it costs on, you know, Amazon or whatnot, but those are two good books for emotional intelligence, for successful development, uh, for success, for development in your workplace, at home, within your family, whatever it might be. Because we know emotion is, it happens from we wake up in the morning to we go to bed at night. And we can either wake up happy and joyful about our day, or we could be upset. And, you know, going to sleep with a broken heart, what that could do for you. So it, 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 it's, it's, Emotion is in every aspect of everything that we do. Right. And you yeah. have a choice in it. You have a choice in how you want to perceive it and how you want to feel. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So, um, I, so that's, that's my, there's so much more we could go there. There's so much in depth, but I think this is, it's important for us to talk about it, but I think this is also a personal journey. Yeah. Just going out there, doing the research, reading the books and developing yourself and just coming back and then having these conversations with, you know, with your friends or your family and just getting it out there. And that's or why, even, you know, even not even your friends, right? The emotional intelligence, like even with people that have a completely yes. different worldview than you that you may not agree with. I mean, that's part of it. Like un getting an understanding of where they're coming from, I think is mm -hmm. huge whether you agree with it or not, you know, instead of mm -hmm. having this, like, you know, I'm better than because I perceive my way, the better way. So, I mean, I think I it's emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. I love it, man. JP, thanks for, right. thanks for being on. Did we, is there anything else? Well, uh, I know I got, I got a book out as well. Yes. Oh, Please called, tell us about yeah. It. Yeah. It's called enlightened by a darker tone. And it's it's a novel, and it's part one of a part of a two part series. I'm currently working on the second part, and it's about a, a young detective slash an activist in his community and what the triumphs and tri um, tribulations he has to go through on a daily basis. And he's a report. He basically does a lot of journaling as well. And a young lady uh, died within the community. And he's basically on a journey to trying to find out, you know, what caused it or what is the issue or who might be involved with this you know horrific uh, situation and it just goes it's it's it tells a story but it goes very in depth into the actual primary characters thought processes 
And how can, how and can it, people get their hands on it? Oh, you get it. You can find it on Amazon. And like oh, by Dr. Tone on Amazon. And uh, definitely, you can follow me on social media as well. You could get you, you can follow me along my journey as we develop as men. Uh, okay. And definitely, you should check it out if you get a chance. Uh, Twelve ninety nine. Uh, and it's it's I'm I'm a I'm a novice in the writing industry, so I'm just trying to develop myself every that's you know, awesome. every chance I get. Absolutely, and, that's awesome. And that's what it's all about. It's just spreading the knowledge, just like we're doing right now. What's it? So, what, give me the name of the book again. Give Enlightened us. by a darker tone. Okay, enlightened by a darker tone. Yes, sir. All right. We'll link okay. to it for sure. And then what's and then how do we how do people find you on I mean do you have what's your handle like how do they find you on social media? Okay, so on Instagram, uh, you can follow me at unmarked Farrell. So it's U N M A R K E D Farrell. P A A R A O H. Okay. And same thing on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, I'm not really big on Facebook. <laughs> I yeah. go there for family, but you know, I just Instagram and, and Twitter, and I, I really don't use Snapchat as much as well. So basically, Instagram and Twitter. Okay. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. So for all the viewers, you know, check me out and uh, follow me on the journey. Uh, positivity. You know, positive vibes moving forward. And working together because we know interdependence is the key. We can't do it by ourselves. You know, right. we need one another. We need one another with, in every aspect of our lives. And right. this is what we're doing right now. You know, who would have known that one day I would meet up with Brian and Keone and, and just have this conversation about right. developing ourselves. And, and that's what it's all about, man. So. It's huge. I, I think especially for men, it's a big, it's a big deal. I mean, it can make your developing it can make your life so much easier and how you how you uh go about in the world making your relationships much much more fulfilling by working on this so mm -hmm. thanks thanks for being on man this is great i wasn't expecting i wasn't expecting this so i'm thrilled that brian brian and you are, are got on so it's cool <laughs> thank you so much hey, no thanks for having me keone and brian i really appreciate you man continue doing what you're doing this is a great thing i've seen all those episodes i don't know this episode 8990 but um <laughs> yeah. hey man hey continue man and longevity is the key and consistency is the key so i'm proud of both of you guys and hopefully one day i could come back on here and give you an update about everything that i'm doing so i, I would i would love it man that would be cool uh, check out check out the book Check out yeah, the book. Absolutely. JP, thanks for joining us. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Like I said, you're leading, uh, you're really living what you're talking about and you see it on campus. And that's part of the reason why I could even open up to you. So definitely look up to you in that, in that regard and take what you said here and take it to heart and keep working on myself. So I appreciate it. Right. And no doubt, yes. brother. You guys, you can both have a good one. All right. Yes. All right. Be well, everybody. We'll talk to you next week.